So Blair, one of the most common suggestions in real estate is to buy the worst house in the neighborhood or buy the cheapest house in the neighborhood. Why is that? Yeah, so one of the things to keep in mind is when you're buying the worst house in the neighborhood, a lot of times is it's the most affordable way to get you into that neighborhood that maybe you desire or that location you desire. And so this gives you room to make the changes that you want and still be in comparison with the other homes around you. So this is something that I did on a couple of properties that I've purchased. And so what that did for me is it allowed me to get into a neighborhood that I wanted to be in and then make upgrades to the house. And so I went in and, you know, one house I put about $60,000 worth of upgrades in. The other one I put about $150,000 of upgrades in. And on both of those, I could now sell it for more money than what I had into it. Absolutely. And we did the same thing. And, you know, it was wallpaper. There was turquoise carpet. I mean, everything that you don't want in a home, right? But it's little changes like that. And, you know, we have probably $200,000 worth of equity in our home right now by buying one of the worst homes in the neighborhood. And so the pro or the con to this is that now it's cash heavy and you do have to go in and earn that sweat equity. And so if you're on a fixed income, this might be a little bit tougher for you to do and you might want to buy a new build like we're standing in right now. However, if you do have a job or you've got some cash from a previous property, then buying the cheapest home in a nice neighborhood or buying the house that you know is the ugliest home where you can make those upgrades and get some sweat equity, that's why people suggest to buy the ugliest house in the neighborhood.